Bible says in Proverbs 14, it says that a man will be satisfied the words that come off his lips. And so it's really a big deal what we say and how we say it that controls our world. So let's say the new declarations together. Everybody say it together. Say, I declare that I am created in the image of God. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I declare with God all things are possible. Today I open up my mind to think like God, be like God, do life the way God intended. Let's lift our hands. Come Holy Spirit, help me elevate my thinking so I can elevate my life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hand clap. So glad you're here. Thank you for watching online. Thank you for being here in person. You may be seated this morning. My name is Jeremy. I'm one of the team members here. I'm a part of Elevate Life, and uh, I'm very honored to be here this weekend. Uh, this, I'm here every weekend. I'm honored to be on stage this weekend uh, bringing uh, the Word of God. I want to say thank you to Pastor Keith and Pastor Sheila and Pastor Josh for this opportunity. We're in a brand new series called Comeback, and it reminds me of that old song, Don't Call It a Comeback. I know that's not Christian, but it reminds me of that song. And so it's super exciting. So uh, glad you're here. It's going to be a great Sunday. The very fact that you woke up this morning, you came to God's house, you're already on the right track, and God's going to bless your life and take care of you and meet every need you have. So if you believe that, say amen. amen. Okay, like six of you. Great. God bless you guys. So it's going to be awesome. We're going to full throttle this thing. Uh, I've already had some caffeine. I'm already ready to go. Actually, I don't drink coffee. I know. Don't. i just not a coffee drinker. Uh, just haven't acquired a taste for it yet. But uh, I'm naturally wired this way. But I believe, I believe that today is going to bless you. Uh, you know, I, 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 I try to, uh, every time I uh, have a message, I try to come up with some kind of visual aid uh, attached to the message. So it just, it, it, you, you might not remember the whole message, but you'll remember maybe a piece of it. And so I think it's important that uh, I'm a visual learner, and so I've got a visual aid for you here in just a few minutes. But uh, I love this series because this series reminds me of a lot of, of just, of just life in general, you know? Uh, the title of my message is, There's Always Time for One More Comeback. And here's the big thought of the message. The big thought of the message is this, God is the God of comebacks, no matter what kind of setbacks we're facing. So just remember that. I grew up in the 80s and 90s uh, as a kid, and I, I played college basketball, believe it or not, I was 170 pounds. You're like, what happened? I don't know. But here's the deal. I, I, I play college basketball, and I was a point guard. And uh, I love the 80s and 90s, especially in the NBA. We had Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Scottie Pippen. We had uh, John Stockton, Carl Malone. We grew up with, like, with guys like that, Charles Barkley, old school, Patrick Ewing, Reggie Miller, some of the old greats, some of the Hall of Famers. Some of you guys, I don't even know any of some of the names now that play now because it's everybody swaps everybody's team so often. But I grew up, I was from Detroit. I grew up with my favorite team is the Detroit uh, Pistons, the bad boys, Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, John Sally. I mean, this was the team. This was the team to beat. They beat up Michael Jordan, Chicago Bowl team. And man, Isaiah Thomas was my hero as a kid growing up on the basketball court. So I grew up in this era. But in 1995, my first year of college, I saw something that was amazing to me. It was one of the greatest comebacks in sports history in the NBA. Reggie Miller playing for the, um, the Indiana Pacers. Reggie Miller was number 31. He was a shooting guard. He, man, he was a pure shooter. He could shoot. His shot was ugly, though. He didn't have the perfect form to elbow up. It was kind of like twisted like this. And so I'm not hating on his shot because he made it to the league, and I didn't make it to the league. I made it to, you know, the online league, you know, video games, you know, NBA, I got you. Uh, but uh, so I'm not trying to hate on him, but, I, but the thing is, this guy was incredible, man, incredible. And so there's a, a game. It's the game one of the Eastern uh, Semi-Conference Finals. They're playing, Indiana Pacers, Pacers are playing the New York Knicks. Now, during this time in 1995, the Knicks had Patrick Ewing, Anthony Mason, John Starks. These were big-time guys. Some of you are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Any basketball fans in here, raise your hand. Okay, half of you. Okay, praise God. The other half, just stay with me. It's going to make sense in a minute, okay? So they were, I mean, it was awesome. Well, here it is, 18 seconds left in game one, Madison Square Garden, 19,000 people are filled this arena. 19,000 people, can you imagine playing in front of 19,000 people? And, and it's game one, you're the Indiana Pacers, you're down by six with 18 seconds left. You're down by six with 18 seconds left. Reggie Miller gets the ball, they inbound it, he comes off two screens, he takes the three-pointer, he, he, he goes up and he makes it. Man, boom, now 15 seconds left on the clock, they're only down by three. They pass in the Knicks, 
pass in the ball, there was a misstep, a mishap, a, a mistake, and what happened was somehow Reggie Miller got the ball again, took two steps back across the three-point line, just rose up once more, shot the three-pointer, boom, tie game, 10 seconds left. I'm talking about a comeback in a matter of literally eight seconds, the game is tied. It is now 105 to 105. The, the, the Pacers are the underdogs. No one thought the Pacers could win any game at all. Sometimes in life, that's what people think. We're the underdogs. We don't think, uh, the, we're, you know, people think, you're never going to make it, you're never going to make it, you're never going to make it. But I just, I, I want to tell you something. The game ended a little bit different. The Knicks missed. Reggie Miller got the ball. He got fouled by John Starks. John Starks fouled him. Reggie Miller went to the foul line, shot two shots. Now they're up two, and then the Knicks miss. But watch this. I want to show you a quick 45-second clip of what really happened. This was one of the greatest all-time comebacks in 1995 in sports history. Watch this. It's seen nearly 60 fouls called. Actually, that is short of the record for both teams in a playoff game. Miller for three, and he got it. Reggie Miller with a clutch tray, and it's 105-102. And a steal. Miller retreats to the three-point line and hits again. Tie game. For only the second, Anna has reached 100 points. They won the other time. Maybe this will be the magic number for them here as well. It's like Indiana's win in game one at Orlando last year. Miller, Anthony, stumbles and falls, time runs out. One of the greatest all-time sports comeback for the Indiana Pacers, and Reggie Miller is known for that comeback. Now here's the quote, here's what I wanted to get to. Let me quote Reggie Miller in the timeout, going in with 18 seconds left in the fourth quarter, down by six, let me quote him. He said this, he said, guys, as long as there's time on the clock, Anything is possible. Can I just tell you something? As long as you got breath in your lungs, blood running through your veins, your heart is beating, anything is possible this year for God to do something in your life. Maybe you need a comeback. This is your year. This is your year. You know, it reminds me of the word of the year. Pastor Keith gave us a word of the year called possible. Luke chapter one, verse 37, for with God, all things are possible. Hold on, pause just for a second. Let me spill the coffee. Let me time out. Here's what it sounds like. Sounds like a comeback to me. All things are possible with God. Sounds like a comeback to me. Let's go ahead and go to Philippians chapter one, verse six. Be in confidence of this very thing. He who has begun a good work will complete it until the day Jesus Christ comes back. Hold on, stop. Sounds like a comeback to me. Let's go ahead and go to another one. Romans chapter eight, verse 28. God causes all things to work out for his good according to those that love him are called according to his purpose. Hold up, time, time out. Sounds like a comeback to me. Let's go ahead and go to 2 Corinthians chapter four, verse eight. Here's what it says. It says, I'm hard pressed on all sides, but I'm not crushed. I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair because Jesus is with me. Hold on, sounds like a comeback to me. Let's go ahead and go to Isaiah chapter 19, verse nine. I'm not, I'm 59 verse 19 it says when the enemy comes in like a flood God the spirit of God will raise up a standard against him sounds like a comeback to me let's go ahead and go to Psalms chapter 30 verse 5 it says weeping may last for the evening but joy comes in the morning sounds like a comeback to me Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 let us not grow weary in doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not faint or lose heart Sounds like a comeback to me. Let's go ahead and go to Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What shall we say of these things? If God is for me, who can be against me? Sounds like a comeback to me. Hold on just a second. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sounds like a comeback to me. God specializes in comebacks. Now, maybe you need a comeback this morning. Some of you are like, I don't need no comeback. You know what I'm saying? Well, here's the deal. You might need one one day. You might want to clap right now for the comeback that you might need in the future. Come on, if you need to come back, let's thank God. He specializes in comebacks. God, that's his specialty. All through the Word of God, 66 books in the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, all of this. This is a specialized in comebacks. That's why we're here this morning, because God gave us a comeback. I'm just saying something. It's pretty powerful. I'm believing for you this morning. I'm believing for you like never before. 
that there's a comeback coming into your business. There's a comeback coming into your marriage. There's a comeback coming into your family. There's a comeback coming into your relationships. There's a comeback coming into your dreams. There's a comeback coming into your purpose. There's a comeback coming into yourself. Sometimes you need to, see, you know, sometimes you need to see and say, you know what? I need to have a meeting with the three leading people in my life. Me, myself, and I. And I need to call a corporate meeting, and I need to get us in order. Because what happens, me, myself, and I sometimes don't say the right things all the time, and sometimes we don't think the right thoughts. That's why it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, take every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Some thoughts are meant to be released, and some thoughts are meant to be locked up. Let me say it again. Some thoughts are meant that are pure, because if you go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, think on these things. Things that are lovely, things that are holy, things that are true, things that are just, things that are righteous. Some thoughts are meant to be released, and some thoughts are meant to be locked up. How many ever said some thoughts out loud that were supposed to be locked up, but then you got yourself locked up in a situation? Yeah, I've been married 22 years. That happened to me a few days ago, and I was trying to bail myself out, and the more I dug, the deeper I got, and I was like, okay, mayday, mayday, we going down. Mayday, mayday, we're going down. I'm calling the watchtower, no one's helping me, man. I'm trying to help the, you know, I'm just keep going down, you know. Boom, crash and burn. And then you walk away like, okay, we'll never do that again. That was not fun. Okay, well, here's the deal. That's a whole nother story. But I'm telling you something. God specializes in comebacks. And you got to take that time sometimes, and you just got to get yourself reset. You know, we've been going through a lot of stuff in the last couple years in America, in the world. And some of us have gotten away from the very belief system that we grew up with. Some of us have lost our first love. Some of us have stepped away from the very thing that got us to the very point that we are today. And I want to just re-fire you up, rekindle that fire, re- re- re-energize you, re- re- reunite you that, man, guess what? God specializes in comebacks. The best days of your life have not even been lived yet. You haven't even seen anything yet what God can do in your life. God can do more. He's an able God. Let me say it one more time. He's an able God. Let me say it one more time to make the devil mad. He's an able God. Let me say it one more time for those that are on the mountaintops or in the valley. He's an able God. Let me say it one more time just to make myself happy because I realize that learning, the key to learning is repetition. He's an able God. Let me say it one more time for those who are up there that are not really listening to me. You're on your IG. He's an able God. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him who is able, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly all we ask or think. Why do we think God isn't able? Because maybe we don't really understand who God is. Maybe we've lost that way of understanding how he really is. See, I'm a realist, but I'm a believer that's a realist. I believe that God can heal. I believe that blind eyes can be open. I believe that the lame can walk. I believe that the dead can come back to life. I believe that if you got cancer in your body, that in Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus, that that cancer will dissolve and go away. I believe that God can take a disease, a diagnosis, and flip the script and cause greatness to happen in your life. Why do I believe that? Why do I believe that? Because I've seen God do it in my life. I've heard stories of God doing it. So there's a belief. I used to tell the guys when I flew around the, the globe because I, I was a, a traveling a motivational speaker, preacher uh, for many years, 14 years of my life. I traveled on the road. And I used to tell the guys all the time, they get, people would pick me up from the airport, hey, are you afraid of flying? Nah, I'm not afraid of flying, man. My, 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 I've been in planes where they've been hit by lightning, where we've dropped about 3,000 feet, you know, and, and the carts flipped over. And, you know, this is how you know when you got, you're on a messed up flight. When the stewardess starts panicking, you know, you better go ahead and call on Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, just go ahead and get it right with God. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I've been on all kinds of flights. But somebody asked me one time, are you afraid? No, I'm not afraid. The wing can fall off. I'm not afraid. Well, what do you mean? The wing falls off, you're dead. No, I just got enough belief on the inside that somehow that God is a God of orchestrating angels and sending angels to hold up that one side. I I, I know it sounds crazy. I know it's okay. It's okay. So you're like, oh, bro, you're off. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But here's the thing. I got enough belief. If God can raise somebody from the dead called Lazarus and he's been dead for a couple days, why can't God hold a plane in the air for me? I mean, where does it, 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 I, I just have a belief system that God can do miracles. And I believe that God can do comebacks. I believe it with all my heart. 
You know, just a couple months ago, I went to a 3D movie. I didn't know it was 3D until I got into the 3D movie. You know, I was wondering why the ticket was so much, but I got in there and I was sitting there and all of a sudden, I'm watching this, this opening lines and it's like fuzzy. It's like, man, they gotta get this film right. They gotta dial this thing in. This thing is off. What is wrong with this thing? Then I started looking around, I was like, oh, this is a 3D movie. Everybody's got, everybody had these little 3D glasses on. I was like, oh shoot, I better go get me some 3D glasses. So here's the deal. If you ever watch a 3D movie without 3D glasses, it's unimpressive. It's no good. You overpaid for your ticket. You're not gonna really get the, 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 the really the, you're not gonna catch the movie, what it's all about. You're gonna miss some action. You, you, you're gonna miss some, 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 some explosion. You know, you're gonna miss some uh, uh, parts of it. So you gotta put on the 3D glasses. Now the 3D glasses are not necessarily all to give the credit. It's really a trick of the eye. If you're an eye doctor, I'm not an eye doctor, but I study enough eye doctors to know it's a trick of the eye. And so it's a trick of the eye. What happens is an illusion. So there's a 3D image that seems like it's popping out, but you gotta have this. Now listen, when you put on the right 3D glasses, it's like the movie comes alive. It's like you're right there in the action. Like, I love action movies. Like, it's got to be action. I don't do Lifetime. I don't do Hallmark. I don't do any of that. I, I, I just, I, I love action. If it's not blowing up and someone's going to be with Jesus, I don't want to watch it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I, I got to do action. And I mean, I, I, mean, I got to have the energy. I got to have the, the, the fire. And all of a sudden, man, it's like, it's like you put these on. It's like you can see it. Like, boom. Ooh. Ooh, that was good. You know, you reach out like you're trying to grab it in the movie theater. You know, anyway, okay, maybe it's only me. Okay, don't. <laughs> I was like, sometimes I try to reach out, like, is that really coming out the screen? But anyways, what happens is we lose our way. And I believe sometimes we, we just see with our natural ability. But there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a spirit realm called faith where God wants us to see in 3D, in God's 3D. God's 3D is a little bit different than our 3D. And let me just tell you something. When you got God's 3D, let me just tell you something. Here's the deal. I walk, I walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, the best days of my life haven't been lived yet. Whatever my hand touches, I am blessed. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out. That the angels of the Lord are encamped around me. He's gonna protect me. He's gonna keep me safe. That God sends angels to go forward and take out every crooked path and make it straight. No, I I'm seeing right now because I have the 3D, the faith glasses that God wants me to have. What happens is if we look through our own natural ability, we put pen to paper, we try to add it up on our own strength, we'll miss it every time. But when we allow the Holy Spirit, when we allow God to intervene in our life, say, God, I need you right now to show up. I've got a circumstance. Let me just tell you something. Your setbacks are not God setting you aside. Your setbacks are not God setting you down. Your setbacks are God setting you up for an incredible comeback, a credible life. And we miss it sometimes. Quitters don't win and winners don't quit. So what does that mean? That means I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna throw the towel in. I'm not walking away. I'm standing sure on what God said. My life is built, Matthew chapter seven, my life is built on the rock, not the sand, not the stuff that shifts and moves and everything else. My life is not built on culture. It's not built on policy. It's not built on what the government says or does or, does or doesn't do. It's not built on intellect. It's not built on someone else's truth. My life is built on the word of God because the word of God, the Bible says the grass will die, the flower Hours will fade, but the word of God will last forever. So my life is built on this. It's built on the rock of Jesus. So I'm not waiting for someone to tell me what my life is built on. I'm digging, I'm pressing, I'm searching. God, that's what my life is built on. My life is built on the rock. Oh man, I just, I remember this one time. I, I, again, I grew up in the 80s and 90s and I love these old movies. Like I'm a movie buff uh, at a level, action movie. Uh, but man, Rocky, I mean, there's like 12 Rockies, you know what I'm saying? Like Rocky one, Rocky two, Rocky three. Some of you don't know Rocky at all. If you don't know Rocky, I don't know if you're saved, you know what I'm saying? But here's the deal, Rocky, Rocky is a Christian movie. I mean, it's got a lot, well, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. It's not a Christian movie, okay? But it's somewhat Christian. It's about the closest thing you're gonna get to a good 80s action uh, flick. But Rocky, man, Rocky, in Rocky four, he fights this dude from Russia, and this man is massive. And, I, and in Rocky five, he fights this young gun named Tommy Gunn. Now, in my house, I got two boys, and, um, and my boys know uh, I don't do it as much because I got in a lot of trouble, but I got two boys. Anytime an action movie comes on, they're like, oh, Oh, watch out, dad's about the trip right now, dad's about, because the action movie, it gets my blood fired up, and next thing I know, I just like grab a hold of him and start wrestling him, like, yeah, Rocky, get him, and, I'm like, and my wife's like, oh my gosh, you know what I'm saying, she's like walking away, like, don't hurt him, but now every time my youngest, he's 13 now, and uh, he's, we're watching an action flick, he's like looking out the corner of his eye, like, 
Is dad about to get up? I'm like, any moment I'm about to get up because I'm feeling it. I feel the blood pressure. I feel the, I feel the excitement. I feel the, the passion. I'm like, ooh, this is a good scene right now to fight somebody. Ooh, this is a good scene right now to lay hands on someone quickly, you know? And, and so, not the spiritual kind of laying hands on people, but like, but th there's this movie scene, and I love it. Rocky, five. Tommy Gunn separates from, from Rocky. They, Rocky was training him. Somehow, they, it just got weird and it separate, but... Rocky walks outside and says, hey, Tommy, you're not going to hurt my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law, and, 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 and Rocky hits him. Tommy falls to the ground. Rocky walks away. You know, Rocky Babo, you know, you know, the Italian dude, you know, the Italian style. You know, he's got that little walk, you know what I'm saying? Act like his hip's out, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? He's got that, you know, it's like Jesus, heal his hip. You know what I'm saying? It's like sometimes I lay hands on the team. No, I'm just playing. So here's the deal. So he's walking, man, and all of a sudden, Tommy gets up and just says, Hey, Rock, and he just nails Rocky. Rocky falls to the ground. Now, Rocky's having flashbacks because he had some trauma happen to him as a boxer. He's having flashbacks. Man, he's having flashbacks when he fought Apollo. He's having flashbacks when he fought the Russian dude. He's having flashbacks when his trainer, Mickey, was in his corner. And this is my favorite part of the scene. Rocky's on the ground. News cameras everywhere. People are, are cheering on Tommy Gunn, and they're yelling at Rocky. Rocky's son comes over. Dad, get up. Dad, get up. His son comes over. His wife comes over. Adrian, get up, get up, get up. Paula comes over, his, his brother in love. Get up. Rocky don't get up. All of a sudden, a flashback. His old little boxer trainer called Mickey. Now, Mickey was a flashback in his mind. All of a sudden, Mickey's right there in his, in his mind. He's like, get up, Rock. Mickey loves you. All of a sudden, the music, done. Done. You know, I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, this is it. Rocky, go get him. I, mean, I can just feel it right now. I can just feel it in my heart. I'm sorry. I was getting too passionate about it. I can feel it. And all of a sudden, Rocky gets up and he goes, hey, Tommy, I ain't heard no bell. And all of a sudden, Rocky just puts a whip. On. Man, we need some more movies like that. I'm just telling you, that gives me, I mean, we just need some more movies like that. But what I, what I, what I felt like in my heart when I was remembering that scene, I was thinking, how many times as a Christian, have I been down and I've heard the Spirit of God say, Jeremy, get up. God loves you. And immediately I feel this strength in my spirit. I'm getting up and like, yeah, Lord, I'm sorry. I had, a, I had an amnesia moment for a second, but I realize your grace is sufficient for me. I realize that your mercy is great for me. And I'm thankful and I'm thankful. If it had not been for God, Psalms 134 verse one, if it had not been for God who was on my side, where would I be? Thank God that I'm here this morning. Some of us should not be here this morning. Some of us should be hooked up on some drugs, locked up in prison. Some of us should already had our obituaries written and been buried, but thank God for his grace and his mercy that he saw fit that we woke up this morning and we came into Elevate Life Church to receive the word from heaven, not from me, but from heaven. I think it's so powerful. That's it. That's the sermon. Close the last story. I'm gonna pray for you. John chapter 5, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I know someone said, you say that all the time. Okay, I love all the stories in the Bible, but this one this week is my favorite. <laughs> John chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. I'm not going to quote it for you, even though I can if you would like, but Jesus just shows up on the scene. He shows back up to Jerusalem. In verse 2, Jesus goes to a place called Bethesda. It means house of mercy. It's a pool, a massive pool that's outside of the temple in Jerusalem. There's five covered porches, five covered porches where people from the entire city of Jerusalem will bring the sick, the most desperate, the most desolate, the, 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 down, of, the, 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 the down and outers. They'll, they'll bring the people that have leprosy, the people that have that blindness, uh, uh, that are lame, that, that can't walk, that, that, that need a touch from heaven, those that are oppressed. I mean, I mean, I mean I'm talking, they bring them there. The Bible says in verse 2, in verse 3, there's multitudes of people. If you look up the word multitude, it means hundreds of people. Hundreds of people are covered uh, underneath these porches. Hundreds. Jesus shows up to the scene. Let me just stop here real quick. I love this because the, 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 the story is when the water is moving, the pool, the water's moving, whoever could get in the water first was completely healed. 
That's why you hear sometimes people say, when the water is stirring, when God is moving, when the spirit is moving, that, that, means, that, means, that means God's ready to do something. You just gotta be ready to receive. You gotta have an expectation. You gotta have a belief. You gotta have the right mindset. That God, I don't know what this is. It's just, it seems a little bit outside of the norm, but I'm just gonna go ahead and believe it's you and you're gonna do something in my life. And so when you do that, what happens is you receive from, from that moment. And so what happens, Jesus shows up on the scene and then there's a guy. There's a guy there, and, 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 and just so you know, there's a guy there, and he's, uh, he's paralyzed. And he's laying on a mat. Now, he's laying on a mat for 38 years. Now, get this, because this will, some of us will just, well, you just won't, won't, won't catch it. 38 years, his life looks like this. For 38 years. The average life expectancy during that time was anywhere from 40 to 45 years. That's without an ailment, without a sickness, without a disease. Can you imagine being 38 years old? This is my life for 38 years. Uh, uh, this man is laying here on a mat. He's wondering, he's worried, he's, he, 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 he's waiting, he's wanting help, he's wanting God to heal him, he's wanting God to do something in his life, but this is his life. Monday, his life looks like this mat. Tuesday, his life looks like this mat. Wednesday, his life looks like this mat. Thursday, his life. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The next week, the first week of May, his life looks like this. The second week of June, can you imagine? 14,000 days his life is on this mat. He's frozen. His life is stagnant. He's stuck. He can't move. Jesus shows up on the scene. This is so powerful. Jesus shows up. The man has a problem. There's a lot of people. I'm not sure if he has the right perspective, but then the promise shows up. Who is Jesus? Changes the game. Jesus walks up to him as the man is laying on the mat and he walks up to him and he says these words. Do you want to be made well? The man immediately says this. I have nobody to put me into the pool. That's not the question. That's not what he asked. Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be healthy? Do you want to be able to move? Do you want to be able to walk? Do you want to be able to live your life to the fullest? The man says, I have nobody. This place must have been unfriendly. For 38 years to live on a mat and not have no one put you in the pool, that had to be a pretty unfriendly place. The first thing I would have to ask the guy, you better check your circle. Because if you got something that you're dealing with for 38 years and you ain't got the right people around you to help you get out of what you're in, you might want to check your circle. Because I thank God that I have a circle of friends that if I got something off, a day, they confronting me. Let me give you some feedback. I mean, I ain't got no short, I mean, I ain't got no long leash. My leash is like this. Like y'all missed it, I was smiling. No, you weren't, you were frowning. Thank you for your feedback. Thanks for correcting me and helping me become better as we are taught in this house. I receive it. I was smiling. But what happens is his circle is messed up. He's got a problem. He ain't got the right people around him. That's why church is the best place to be to find the right people. Because guess what? People that come to God's house, they're on a mission. They, they, they've got a desire to grow closer to God. And man, if there's somebody that got up this morning and they worked through that little, you know, well, is it gonna rain or is it not gonna rain? I heard it at 4.30 this morning, but I'm not sure if it's raining. If it's raining over there, I'm not sure. If the sun comes out, maybe I might go ahead. No, thank God for no fair weather Christians. No, I'm not going based on the fair weather. I'm going because God's called me and I'm gonna go and love on Jesus because he's given me life and he's given me a reason to celebrate and I'm gonna go ahead and exalt him, so I'm going to church. Now, I understand technology and all that. I'm not getting all that. I'm not, Pastor Keith, that's his, that's not me. I'm a team member. The point I'm trying to make is he didn't have the right people. And then his perspective was off. Jesus asked him the question. His perspective was, I ain't got nobody. And then Jesus said three commands to the man. So powerful. He said, get up. The man looking at Jesus, can you imagine laying there for 38 years and some, some brother shows up and says, get up? <laughs> like, bro, I've been laying here for 38 years. Like, you see this thing? It don't, they don't work, bro. They don't work. There's atrophy. There's no muscle. It's bone. 
You want me to get? And immediately, somehow, some way, the man knew that Jesus was a man of authority, of power. The man stands up. But here's where I think the man would have stopped if Jesus says, if he didn't say this next phrase. Jesus said, get up and take up your mat. Most people would stop by getting up. Well, let me just stay here. I know this for 38 years. This is a plan. In case I decide to go any further and it doesn't work out, at least I can come back right here. I've got my spot reserved next to the pool. I know all these people. They've been sick for so many years just like I have. This is my spot. No one knows. They can't take my spot. This is my spot. I've been here for 38 years. You can't come in here and just start taking my chair. I've been a member. You know, I'm sorry. I, you can't just come in here. This is my... I got off on old church stuff. This, this is my spot. You can't come in here. This, this is my thing. But Jesus says, get up, take up your mat. This is so powerful, but we miss it when we read passages of scripture. He gets up, he takes up his mat. The mat that once was holding him, now he's holding the mat. Hold up, why? It's because now he's got a true testimony of what God has done. They've only known the man by the position of him laying on the mat. Now when they see the man and they see the mat, they're gonna say, wow, what a miracle that was. See, when I walk into a building like this, I don't see anybody that's never been through stuff. I see people that have been through stuff but then never gave up because you came here to God's house this morning. So what am I doing? I'm walking around, I got my testimony right now. Oh, I've been through some stuff. I've been laying on a lot of mats. But you see this mat right here? This is a mat where God showed up and made some provision happen in my life when I needed God to do that. Oh, you see this mat right here? This is when I needed a healing in my body. And the doctor said it didn't look very good for me, but God showed up and gave me healing in my body. Oh, you see this mat right here? This is when God did something in my family's life that it was messed up. My family was all over the mat, but somehow God's grace came in and brought unity back in my family. You see this mat right here? This is the goodness and the faithfulness of God. This is God being good to me. Then Jesus says, not just get up, take up your mat, but he says walk. Ooh, that's the hard part. Sometimes to walk out God's purpose is hard. Sometimes to walk out what God's called you to walk out is hard. But that's why you gotta have the right people. That's why you gotta have the right perspective. That's why you can't blame, you see, here's the deal, you can, you can live in history or you can make history. Let me say it differently. You can live in history or you can be a history maker. Let me say it differently. This, let me say it differently. You can live in your past or you can believe God for a great future. You know what, here's the deal. I'm not gonna live in my history. I'm a history maker. You know what, my family's never came this far before. I'm the first person to graduate from high school in my family. I'm the first person to go to college in my family. I'm the first person to walk across a stage and, and, and get a degree in my family. So what am I doing? I'm paving the way for my sons. I'm paving the way for their families, for their children. Well, here's the deal. Oh, oh, oh you, you know, you, your dad was an alcoholic. Your dad was a drug addict. Your dad was a drug dealer. Oh, but you don't know, I, I've never done that stuff. I've been faithful to God. And I'm not saying I'm better than anybody, but God's hand's been on my life. I've been serving God for 37 and a half years. I've been putting him first. I'm gonna trust God. And let me just tell you my man. Oh, I've got some wounds. I've got some scars. But this is my testimony what God has done in my life. He's been so good to me. There's not gonna be a day that goes by as long as I draw breath and I'm not gonna thank God that I'm alive. There should have been some moments I should not have been here. My brother, man, God bless him. He went down a whole different road. But somehow God kept me on that straight and narrow that man, look what the Lord has done. He's been so good to you. He's been so good to me. He's been faithful. The man gets up and he carries his mat and he walks out his purpose for God. Two hunters were hunting on an abandoned field, so they thought. They came over to a big well and they wanted to know how deep the well was because they couldn't see the bottom. They grabbed the giant car transmission, there was junk laying everywhere. They grabbed this giant transmission, they picked it up and they threw it in the bottom of this well. They listened to hear the splash of the water. It took a few seconds, but finally they heard it. It's like, that's pretty deep. They turned around, they saw this old, crazy looking goat charging at them. They jumped out of the way, both of them immediately, and the goat went down the well. They turned around, they saw some guy walking in the distance, overalls on. Like, this must, be a, this must be the man's property. Hey, we're two hunters, we're wanting to hunt. You, you mind if we hunt your property? Yeah, that's fine, no problem. He goes, you own it? Yeah, I own all this acres and I own all this well and stuff. He goes, okay.
okay? He said, the farmer said, uh, have you seen my goat anywhere? And the man said, yeah, man, that goat is crazy. That goat almost killed us. We had our guns. We could have shot each other, and that goat could have rammed us. We, we, we wouldn't have been alive. And then one of the hunters said, man, you need to tie that goat up. The farmer said, yeah, he, he was tied up to an old transmission. Both of the hunters kind of backed up, and they just walked away. Here's the moral of the story. Whatever you're tied up to, you'll follow. So you better make sure in this time and age that we live in that my life is anchored in this thing. My life is 100% in this thing. I'm not counting on anybody else. Now, I'm going to count on my friends. I'm going to count on my family of choice. I'm going to count on my church. I'm going to count on my pastor. I'm going to count on my loved ones. I'm gonna count, but I'm counting on Jesus 100%. I'm counting on him. I'm just telling you something. He's the one that got me this far. He's a good God. I don't know if you're here this morning. Maybe you're, maybe you're not going through anything. Maybe you're not struggling. Maybe everything's great. We ain't hating on you. We ain't hating the game. We ain't hating the player. We're happy for you. We celebrate you. We, we high five you, you know. But maybe you're here this morning, like most people. We've got some things that we're dealing with. Life isn't easy. Life is hard. We all know that. Sometimes we want life to be just peaches and cream. Our modern day term, a peach shake from Chick-fil-A. <laughs> but life is difficult. One thing I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, as a team member on this team underneath Pastor Keith, Pastor Sheila, that God is faithful. He's a good God. He loves you this morning so much, so much. He cares about every single need that you have, and he'll take care of it. He's been good to you. He's been good to you. He's been good to you when you didn't even know he's been good to you. He's been faithful to you when you didn't even know he's been faithful to you. There's some things that he's protected you from that could have took your life out. But the very fact that, again, you're here today means God's grace is there. I wanna pray for you that are maybe going through it right now. I'm gonna ask our prayer team to come up. And they're gonna be at the front. This is not to be weird. We're not trying to prolong anything. We're done. I'm gonna close in prayer. We're gonna bless you out. But I'm gonna ask our prayer team just to stand right here. And we're gonna dim the lights in just a moment. And our worship team's gonna worship, sing a song. If you need prayer for anything, if you need prayer for a situation in your marriage, if you need prayer for a situation in your business, in your finance, if you need prayer uh, it, it, uh, just in your own personal journey. There's men and women that, are, that have been prayed up. They're ready to pray for you. They're ready to come in agreement with you. But before they do that, I would like you to just bow your head and close your eyes just for a second. With every head bowed and every eye closed, with no one looking around. Maybe you're in here today and maybe you don't know the greatest comeback ever. The greatest comeback ever was Jesus Christ dying for you and me. And the Bible says he rose again on the third day. That's the greatest comeback ever. Because he did that, me and you can experience life forever. The Bible says that we can have an abundant life, a life of joy, a life of peace. If you're in here today, I'm not gonna embarrass you or call you out, but if you're in here today, you say, you know, Jeremy, I, I need the Lord in my life. I need God in my heart. If that's you, I just on the count of three, I'm gonna ask you to slip your hand up because I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pray for you. On the count of three, here we go. One, two, three. Slip your hand up high. I wanna pray for you. I'm the only one looking. I, I see your hand. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I see you in the balcony. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I see your hand. You can put your hands down so that no one feels left out. Can everyone just say this together? This is a prayer of asking Christ to be Lord of our life. Everybody say, dear Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross and you rose again. Today, this very moment, I invite you into my life to be my Lord and Savior, to be my best friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, and you can text Jesus to 972 945 
9772. Just text the word Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, we're going to follow up with you. We're going to send you some information. We're not going to bug you, but, but maybe you got a praise report. Maybe you got a prayer request. You can text that same number, 972-945-9772. You can text that same number. But we're going to take a moment in the service. We're done, folks. We're going to take a moment in the service, and we're just going to exalt the one that's throwing on the service, and that's God. If you have a need this morning, I'm going to ask you to come forward, and these this prayer team is going to pray for you and the worship team is going to sing this course and then I'm going to bless you out. Let's, let's stand together and let's worship. We need a fresh wind The fragrance of heaven Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out A holy anointing The still pray. If you want to still get prayed for, you can. I'm going to pray over you right now, and then we're going to bless you out. We're going to keep the altars open for as long as people need prayer for and the prayer team. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for what you did today here at Elevate Life Church. I thank you, Lord, for your presence being in this place right now. We can feel it. We know that you're doing things in our life right now. We're grateful. God, let us leave today with the rightness of mind, the rightness of thought, the clarity of what you say about us, that we are your children, that you love us, that you created us and made us. It's never time to give up. This is our comeback season like never before. God, you're calling all of us to a new level, a higher level, a new place, and we're thankful for that. Protect us this week, keep us safe and bless us. And Lord, let us be a blessing to those that we come in contact with and let us be able to meet the needs of those around us. In Jesus' name, 
in Jesus' name. I want you to continue the prayer, but can we just give the Lord a hand clap as they're praying? <laughs> Pastor Whitney, could you help me bless them out? Yes. Let's lift up our hands as people are getting pray, prayed for and we're gonna say our declaration. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May you know that if God is for you, who can be against you? If God is on your side, whom shall you fear? May you be like a tree that's planted by rivers of living water, that your leaf will not wither. And whatsoever you do, come on, say it like you mean it. It shall. 